3D platformers define the first two generations of PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon on the PS1, and the holy trinity of Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, and Sly Cooper on the PS2. But there's one 3D platformer that everybody always seems to forget. Blasto. Another better series everyone always forgets is Ape Escape. At one point, Ape Escape was Sony's best-selling series, and little monkeys or apes some kind of primate, were arguably PlayStation's real mascots, since Crash and Spyro were owned by Universal at the time. The first three Ape Escape games are unlike anything Sony had ever done before or since. They're colorful, goofy, wacky, irreverent, and, uh, uh unhallowed? You play as a teenager capturing sentient naked monkeys with a net. These games didn't take themselves seriously, is what I'm saying. They also represented Sony at their most creative, featuring a brand new control scheme never before seen in gaming. Interest in the series waned over time, however, and after the first three mainline games, Sony didn't know how to recapture that initial spark. They cracked Ape Escape open like a coconut and began monkeying around with it every chance they got, creating party games, racers, a JRPG, and even a motion-controlled on-rail shooter. But instead of reinvigorating the series, the constant experimentation only killed it. The last Ape Escape game came in 2011, and its original developer no longer exists. How did a once mighty franchise fall so quickly, yet drag on for so long? And why didn't Sony just keep making traditional Ape Escape games in the first place? To answer those questions is to also tell the tale of the game's creator. In November 1993, Sony Japan Studios was born. It was created shortly after the establishment of Sony Computer Entertainment, which was the branch within Sony that would handle the newly announced PlayStation console. According to former high-level executive Shohei Yoshida, the goal of Japan Studios was to assist outside developers create and port games to the PlayStation, and not necessarily develop their own games. Their first project was Crime Crackers, developed by MediaVision. They'd continue helping first, second, and third party developers throughout their whole existence, but the scope of the studio changed in 1996 when Yoshida took over the studio himself. He created several teams internally with the goal of finally making their own games. This led to classics like Jumping Flash, created by the team Sugar and Rockets, which actually released in 95, the Legend of Dragoon, Ico, Loco Roco, and Siren, to name a few. But the game that would really put them on the map started development sometime in approximately late 1996 or early 97, and the timing could not have been better. As this new team were starting, PlayStation engineers demonstrated to them their latest creation, the Dual Analog Controller. First released in 1997, it was the first controller with two analog sticks. The team at Japan Studio was so impressed that they decided to make the sticks a core feature of the game. As such, Ape Escape became the first game ever to require the use of two analog sticks, the left to move your character, and the right to use your assortment of ape-catching gadgets. And that kind of leads to the fascinating thing about the creation of Ape Escape. So often when it comes to the creation of any piece of art, especially classics, we always hear about a single creator having this grand idea that they've always wanted to make, this spark of inspiration that led to the creation of this whole grand thing. Ape Escape has no single creator, and there never was an idea. It was created by a group of people, given the task of making a new game that just happened to stumble upon a series of ideas and the new dual analog control scheme. It all just kind of came together. Kenji Kaido might be the closest we can point to as a creator of the series. He was the lead designer and associate producer on the first Ape Escape, though never worked on another game in the franchise again. There's also Hidakune Sakai and Toshitaki Suchikura. Sakai was the designer and planner, while Suchikura was a programmer. Both worked on Ape Escape 1, 2, and 3, making them, as far as I can tell, the only two people who worked on all three games. Ape Escape was released on June 22, 1999 in North America, June 24 in Japan, and in Europe on July 2nd. The game sees an unnamed professor create a helmet designed to raise the intelligence of monkeys. You know, normal stuff. The first helmet worked, causing Spectre the Helmet, Spectre the Helmet, Spectre the Helmet to become as smart as a human. Shockingly, despite his name, the helmet turns him evil, and he uses several more helmets to create an army of over 200 other monkeys. Then he uses the Professor's time machine to go back in time and change history so that monkeys are the dominant species. It's up to you as Kakaru, Spike in the US and Europe, to capture all 204 monkeys and put an end to Spectre's plans. 
Sure enough, the game's control scheme was unlike anything seen in games before. Your assortment of gadgets are all controlled by the right analog stick. The stun club requires you to press the stick forward to swipe with the stick forward. With the net, you have to sweep the stick from left to right. For the slingshot, you have to pull back on the stick before flicking it forward. They managed to come up with a lot of fun uses for the analog stick. It kind of reminds me of the Wii's motion controls in a way, only not nearly as annoying. Yoshida once said in an interview with Siliconero that he was coming up with so many ideas only to scrap them because he didn't like them, that when he came into his office one morning, he found a note signed by the programmers asking him to stop this trial and error type of development. One thing that always stood out with this franchise is how localized each release was to each particular region. Aside from the name differences, there are several games in the series that never left Japan, some that never made it to Europe, and for some reason, the games that did make it to Europe, specifically the UK, had different voice acting than the American versions. Take Ape Escape 2, for example. The American version featured the voices of Ash and Misty, Veronica Taylor and Rachel Lillis, from the Pokemon anime playing the two leads, Jimmy and Natalie, but the UK version featured British voice actors instead. What do you want? Do we exceed the weight limit? Don't worry, the stuff went through fine. What are you doing? You've gone over the weight limit. Don't oh, worry, the stuff went through fine. This might have been done because in the European release of Ape Escape 2 and 3, the characters retained their Japanese names. Though the US names were used in Ape Escape 1, so that doesn't really explain that. Maybe Sony thought it would broaden the appeal of the game in the UK, but that's just speculation, as no official reason has ever been given. An Ape Escape manga also starred around this time, a four-panel series in the magazine Koro Koro Comics that ran off and on from June 1999 all the way to October 2011. These also got a standalone release, though they were never released in English. After the release of Ape Escape, Japan Studio continued to make their own games, most notably Legend of Dragoon in December 1999 for Japan and June 2000 for the US. A third team was also at work on what would become Ico, or Eco if you prefer. Also in 1999, they began working on smaller Japanese-exclusive PS1 games and the launch title Fantavision for the fancy new PlayStation 2 the following year. And already in 2001, Ape Escape would get its first spin-off for the new system. Peepo Sorrow 2001, Peepo apparently referring to the sound of an alarm in Japan, was released in Japan on July 5th, 2001. In this game, instead of capturing the apes, you instead, um, used a vacuum to suck the pants off the monkeys and then put the pants in a giant washing machine to clean them and had to prevent the apes from grabbing the pants before they were done being cleaned. You know, normal stuff. A Western release was planned, but was cancelled for unknown reasons. This would establish a trend for the series going forward, much like another game that year called McDonald's Original Happy Disc, which was given out as a promotion only at Japanese McDonald's. It was basically a demo collection for Peepo Sorrow 2001 and Parappa the Rapper, but with McDonald's burgers and fries added in as collectibles, and the golden arches watching over you at all times. You know, if it weren't for that whole vacuuming pants off monkeys and putting them in the washing machine thing, this this might be the weirdest game in the series. But this is Ape Escape, so this is pretty low-level stuff. Around this time, Kenji Kaido, the designer and producer of the first Ape Escape, went on to work with Team Aiko on Aiko, and later Shadow of the Colossus. So for the sequel, Naota Ota was brought on to serve as the game director. Before joining Japan Studio sometime in 2000, he worked at Capcom on Street Fighter Alpha 3 and Puzzle Fighter. Ape Escape 2 was released in Japan on July 18th, 2002, but didn't see a Western release until the following year, March 14th in Europe and June 30th in North America. This time around, players took control of Hikaru, Jimmy in the US, who happens to be Spike's cousin. He and Natsumi, Natalie, are watching the professor's lab while he's on vacation. He tasks the two with delivering a load of pants to the sentient monkeys who, after the first game, were sent to another dimension called Monkey Park. But Jimmy is kind of an idiot and sends not only pants, but also the helmets to Monkey Park as well. So it's up to Hikaru slash Jimmy to recapture all of the monkeys and Spectre, who is once again trying to take over the world. Ape Escape 2 was just as well received and beloved as the first game. However, it's around this point in the series where I think we can already see the cracks in Sony's interest forming. I said earlier that there were some Ape Escape games that never left Japan, and I think that 
coupled with the two different English dubs, kind of speaks to the hesitation of Sony to release the series outside of Japan. Of the 14 Ape Escape games, not counting that McDonald's one, four never left Japan. Pumped and Primed never released in Europe, while Ape Academy 2 and I Toy Monkey Mania never released in North America. Furthermore, and I think this is kind of the smoking gun for me, Ape Escape 2 and Pumped and Primed weren't published in North America by Sony, but Ubisoft. This makes me think that Sony didn't believe these games would succeed overseas, and we never would have gotten them, or Ape Escape 3, which was published by Sony, if it weren't for Ubisoft releasing the sequel in North America. Now that may sound ridiculous today, but back in the 90s and early 2000s, it wasn't usual, even for big developers, to make games specifically for one region and never release them anywhere else. In 1999, Japan Studios developed Pocket Moo Moo and Robot Mon Dieu exclusively for Japan. That same year, Sony subsidiary Psygnosis developed G Police and Kingsley's Adventure only for North America and Europe. So I can see a scenario where Sony higher-ups decided Ape Escape was too niche for the West. Maybe they took a flyer on the first one, weren't happy with its sales, and decided to keep the series in Japan going forward. Plus, with the launch of the PS2, Sony already had Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, and Sly Cooper, so maybe they figured a fourth 3D platformer would cannibalize sales of the other three? But then maybe Ubisoft saw the potential in the series. Ubisoft was actually pretty good back then, and published the sequel themselves, and maybe two sold so well that Sony decided to publish three internationally. Whatever the case, it's clear Sony didn't really know what to do with Ape Escape, and you'll see what I mean soon. For now though, after Ape Escape 2, the series was writing something of a high, and there were already quite a few spin-offs. The first Ape Escape anime premiered in Japan, called Let's Get Saru Get You. These were a series of CG shorts that focused mostly on the monkeys. Three of these episodes were translated into English and premiered on Nicktoons, which would later spin off into its own series of shorts in America in 2009, though there were only 38 episodes compared to the Japanese version 76. Ape Escape Pumped and Primed released in 2004 in Japan and North America, again published by Ubisoft in the US. This one's a party game, pretty much a ripoff of Mario Party, and it was the first non-3D platformer in the series. That same year, Japan and Europe got iToy Monkey Mania, which was 50 mini-games featuring the iToy, obviously, that had even less to do with Ape Escape than Pumped and Prime did. Both were poorly reviewed, and if I had to guess, which I do since we don't have the numbers, I'd wager they didn't sell particularly well either. In another case of Western markets being an afterthought, Ape Escape Academy for the PSP released in Japan on December 30th, 2004, Europe on September 1st, 2005, and January 17th, 2006 in North America. This was another minigame collection that was also not particularly well received. Many reviewers pointed to long load times, controls and objectives that weren't very well explained, and most of the minigames themselves just being boring, like a basic rock-paper-scissors game. The official PlayStation Magazine actually gave it a 1 out of 5. It got a sequel the following year, and was equally poorly received. A remake of the original Ape Escape, called On the Loose, released on the PSP in Japan and the US in 2005, and Europe in 2006. Yes, you heard that right, it was for the PSP. You know, the handheld infamous for its lack of a second analog stick, which is kind of a big deal for a game that requires two. Yeah, without that, the gadgets were all mapped to the face buttons, and while it was a noble effort, it wasn't quite the same. That high I talked about after the launch of Ape Escape 2 was clearly over. All the while, many of Japan Studios' efforts, both developing and publishing, would remain exclusive to Japan, like Vib Ripple, Doko Demo Isio, and Chain Dive. Others like Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, Lifeline, and Dual Hearts would all have to find other publishers for the West. Sony clearly viewed Japan Studio as just that, a Japanese studio and nothing more. Ironically, that changed with the release of Ape Escape 3. Sony cut out middleman Ubisoft and actually published it internationally themselves, though not after another hefty delay. July 2005 for Japan, January 2006 for the US, and May 2006 for Europe, less than a year before the launch of the PS3 in all regions. Featuring two new protagonists in Satoru and Sayaka, Kai and Yumi in the US, the duo must rescue Spike, Jimmy, and the Professor after Spectre teamed up with a human scientist named Takomi to hijack a bunch of TV stations around the world and broadcast a mind-controlling broadcast that turned the brain of anyone who watched it into Swiss cheese. 
Ape Escape 3 changed things up by allowing the monkeys to steal your gadgets and use them against you, and allowing you to transform into different creatures with one of the professor's devices, and also their two protagonists. This game is also infamous for its crossover with, of all things, Metal Gear Solid Triangle. I mean Delta. Uh, three. Yeah, three. MGS3 had a secret level called Snake vs. Monkey, and saw series protagonist Big Boss, a uh, naked snake at the time, sorry, having to capture several monkeys while wearing a banana-themed outfit and celebrating like a schoolgirl whenever he caught one of the monkeys. Gotcha, gotcha. All done. Yes! Ape Escape 3 would return the favor with Messel Gear Solid Snake Escape, which is practically a full game itself. It's an hour and a half long adventure that recreates Metal Gear Solid with Ape Escape's monkeys, complete with an MGS3 style main menu, codec calls, a Shagohod boss fight, and even original series characters, though with different voice actors. By the way, we haven't been properly introduced yet. I'm Snake. You can call me that from now on. And you? <laughs> It's incredible how hard this minigame goes. With the release of Messel, I mean, uh, Ape Escape 3, was primed for years of more great sequels and interesting ideas. But you remember how I said it was ironic that Ape Escape 3 was the start of Japan Studio releasing their own games internationally? Well, I say that because it turns out, despite Japan Studio's growing influence, this would be the last mainline 3D platformer Ape Escape game. From here on out, the series would consist of nothing but spin-offs each receiving a worse reception than the last, and each suffering worse and worse sales. Saru Getchu Million Monkeys launched exclusively in Japan in 2006. It's a weird mashup of the party mechanics of Pumped and Primed and the platforming and monkey capturing the series was known for. I'm gonna sidetrack here a little bit. Despite being released exclusively in Japan, Yahoo Italy reviewed the game and mistakenly assigned their cookbook reviewer to it. They called the game a recipe for success, further saying, Take the beauty of butterflies, a hundred monkeys out of your mind, and mix well with a simple yet innovative gameplay and graphics up to date. Bake for a few minutes in a preheated oven of Sony Computer Entertainment, and voila, here is Ape Escape. Saru Getchu Pipo Saru Racer was released on the PSP in December 2006 and was yet another Japanese exclusive. At first glance, it's the obligatory kart racer of the franchise, but if you look closer, you'll notice it's actually a David Cronenberg body horror film. Instead of the series protagonists, you know, racing in carts, the player adds wheels and engines to the monkeys and they become the carts. You know, normal stuff. Also in 2006 came Saru Get You On Air, a full-length anime series by Zebek, the same studio behind the first two Zoid series. It was CG like the previous two shows, and loosely adapted the plots of Ape Escape 3, Pumped and Primed, and Million Monkeys. It got 51 episodes over a year before getting cancelled. Unsurprisingly, this never got a Western release either. Yet another Japanese PSP exclusive was Saru Getchu Saru Saru Daiketsuen, or Saru Getchu Saru Saru Big Mission in 2007. It's the closest we ever got to Ape Escape 4, featuring platforming and monkey catching. And you actually got to play as one of the monkeys in this one. Actually, you control... You, you control the helmet and change monkeys by ejecting yourself off of one monkey and moving on to another one. You know, normal stuff. And all the monkeys had different abilities, too. Some could hide, some could jump higher, some could swim. The fact that this never got a Western release, while a bunch of party games did, kind of speaks volumes as to Sony's opinion of the franchise. Ape Quest released in 2008, yet again for the PSP, exclusively as a digital download-only title in North America and Europe. Digital only was not a good thing in 2008, but it's better than no release at all. Arguably. This was a turn-based RPG that had a totally different story to the rest of the Ape Escape series. It really, it feels more like a new IP that they just slapped the Ape Escape branding onto, and the fact that it launched a full year in North America and Europe before its Japanese release, where it did get a physical version, might be proof of that. And finally, there was PlayStation Move Ape Escape in 2011, called Ape Escape on the Move in Europe. And it's a rail shooter that requires the PlayStation Move controller. Yeah, no surprises here, but it's the worst reviewed Ape Escape game that even IGN called a shovelware bargain bin Wii game. 
Now, brace yourselves for what I'm about to say. This would be the last Ape Escape game ever. 12 years ago from the time of recording this video. Actually, we'll say 13 to give this video longer legs. With this, it's clear that Sony viewed Ape Escape as little more than filler by this point. Any game they had made that they didn't think would perform well, they can just slap this IP on and hope the cute, recognizable apes could push a few extra units. And by then, that strategy no longer worked. Some of those games were decent, sure, but all of the good ones after 3 never left Japan anyway. Oh, and if this video wasn't depressing enough, both Ape Escape and Jack and Daxter's final appearances were PlayStation Move exclusives. It's okay, we're all suffering together. While Ape Escape faded into obscurity, Japan's studio were breaking out internationally. Several of their games, such as Echo Chrome, Padapon, Loco Roco, Trash Panic, and Puppeteer were all finally getting international releases. They were working with bigger developers on bigger releases too, like White Knight Chronicle and Demon Souls. The PS3 generation was kind of the golden era for Japan studios, even as Ape Escape was abandoned. But if Ape Escape's death was slow, Japan studios' demise came out of nowhere in 2021, but that's a story for another day. 2019 was the Ape Escape series' 20th anniversary. Sony celebrated by creating a Twitter account and posting a two and a half minute video showing gameplay from every game in the series. And that was it. Barely a year later, Sony deactivated that Twitter account. I think that kind of tells you all you need to know about how Sony views Ape Escape these days. Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna keep going. In 2018, Sony released the PlayStation Classic to ride the success of Nintendo's NES Mini. Remember that thing? It featured 20 games, Ape Escape not being one of them. Ape Escape 1 and 2 were released on PlayStation Plus as part of their retro collection, only they released the PAL versions, which run slower than the US and Japanese versions. To this day, they still haven't released Ape Escape 3 on the service, or any of the other Ape Escape games for that matter. Oh, and uh, just to add icing to the cake, when they first announced Ape Escape 2 for the PlayStation Plus collection service thingy, they called it a PS1 game. Yeah. Ape Escape is an important game in PlayStation history. It was the first game to use the now iconic dual analog stick controller, and it was the second game developed by Japan Studio. More than that, it was PlayStation's first major franchise that was 100% owned by Sony. The fact that it's so mistreated today says a lot about where PlayStation is right now. I'd say the future of Ape Escape is dark, but that would imply that it has a future. No, I think we have seen the last of this franchise. It's on a farm somewhere now with Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper. But instead of dwelling on those very dark thoughts, let's all go back to the original Ape Escape series and remember what made us fall in love with these games to begin with. Or you can make a 30 minute YouTube video complaining about it, whatever works for you. Oh, that was perfect, man. Holy <laughs> You don't get that very often.